Old Dutch Cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Patsy, get every boy belonging to the club into the gymnasium. Why? What's up, Nick? I've got to make a speech to one of them. To one? Then why make it to 120? Because one of the boys knows the killer in this case. And I don't know which boy it is. Now, the case of the Luminous Spots. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. There's pandemonium in the gymnasium of the downtown boys' club, Nick Carter's favorite charity. For with one minute to go in the big basketball game with Delaware House, Nick's boys are trailing by one point. Put it in, boys! We can't let Delaware beat us! Oh, Nick, only ten seconds more. You're going to try, Patsy. Come on, Smokey! Make Come this on, one go! Smokey. Make it, Smokey, boys! Miss Patsy. Smokey missed again. Oh, and that's the end of the game. Well, we took a licking. I'd sort of hoped that Smokey Beach could help us lick Delaware this year. It looked like a flash when he joined the club last month. Oh, well. Oh, don't look so sad, Nick. Think how much worse Smokey Bates feels. Hiya, Smokey. I've been expecting you. Come in, come in. Hi, Norton. Hi. Nice little joint you got here, fella. Yeah. Place upstairs used to be a dance hall. This is the basement. Costs us three bucks a month rent. Hey, who's the dame? Oh, that, that's uh, that's Fran Hollis. Hey, Fran. Yeah? This here's Smokey Bates. Oh, hello, Smokey. Hiya, Fran. Nice game you played tonight. Thanks. Say, which reminds me, uh, here's your dough, Smokey. Twenty-five bucks. Nice pay for just missing a few baskets now and then, huh? Yeah, I'll say so. We cleaned up pretty good on the bets, too. Made some nice dough. Yeah, yeah boy, this 25 feels good in the pocket. Ah, that's pin money, kid. Peanuts. We uh, could cut you in on some real dough if you uh, want to play ball. You mean throw another game? Wake up, kid. Wake up. Life ain't all basketball games. But if you're the kind of guy that's got nerve and brains and likes plenty of excitement, you, uh... You could make plenty of dough. Yeah, Jerry and Jean from your club joined up with Noonan last month. Yeah? Well, what do they make a week, Noonan? Oh, 40, 50 bucks easy. What do you say, Smokey? I think maybe this is just what I've been looking for. You can count me in, Noonan. Good, it's a deal. Meet me here tomorrow morning at 7.30, Smokey. Bring 20 newspapers and a screwdriver. What's the papers got to do with it? Look, Smokey, here's the pitch. You and me's gonna make like we're newsboys in case we get stopped. Oh, I get it. We make like we're on a delivery route. <laughs> That's right. Only we don't work for no pikers, though, like regular newsies do. This apartment house is next, Bates. What do we do here? Same as the last place? Ah, no. We use a different technique in here. The first apartment on the right. Ring the bell. You kidding? Ring it, I said. This is another of the joints I've been casing. Like I said, it's a cinch to look into first floor apartments and get the dope. The guy lives here alone. Goes to work every morning at seven. That's why you rang the bell? Yeah, just to make sure. Well, he ain't in. Give me that screwdriver, kid. I'm going to show you a fancy way to open the locks. Light a match. I want light. Okay. This guy keeps his dough in the kitchen. In a sugar can. He's... Watch it, Smokey. What are you kids doing there? Uh, uh, you nothing, mister. We're just delivering papers. Who do you think you're fooling, Mac? I saw you working at the lock of that screwdriver. 
You're a couple of sneak thieves. Oh, no, you're drunk. Get away, Sonny. Get your hands off me. Let go. Cheap little tin horn gangsters. You got us ah. wrong, mister. We ain't crooks. Watch out, Smokey. Get out of the way. Don't try nothing funny, son. What do you Come got in your hand there? It's a gun, mister. Ah, like little toy pistol. Let me go. Don't think I'll fall for that, Sonny boy. You're falling for it, but good, Grandpa. Don't oh, go. Oh. What's the rush? Where are we driving to? I got a telephone call from Maddie, Patsy. Insisted I drop everything and hurry up to 120 Amsterdam Avenue. Says my downtown boys club is involved. It is? How? I don't know. Maddie wouldn't say. Hmm. Here we are, 120. Come on. Right. Oh, all Maddie would say was that he discovered a murder. Murder? Hey, is that you, Nick? Yes, Maddie. It's a nasty case, Nick. Looks like one of your boys is mixed up in it. I'd hate to believe that, Matty. Yeah, well, look here. This corpse is Homer Wellan, janitor of the building. Oh. Hey, quiet, you boys, will you? Quiet. <clears throat> he was found dead about a half an hour ago. Twenty-two caliber bullet right through the heart. In some kind of scrap before he was shot, Nick. Yeah, I see the scratches on his hand. And look what we found inside one hand. A piece of wool torn from a sweater, and on it, a small silver pin with the initials D.B.C. Oh, Nick, it's the downtown boys club pin. Yes, I'm sorry to say. Oh. Well, Nick. Well, Matty, I can't answer for every boy in the club. We've got over a hundred members. One or two may be kind to do a thing like this, but... Hey. Huh? Who belongs to this screwdriver? Well, I figured it was the janitors, but I don't figure all these newspapers. What happened is obvious. Some boy came in here this morning carrying these newspapers, probably to disguise himself as a newsboy. Yeah? Tried to jimmy open the apartment door with the screwdriver. Oh, wait, oh. Nick. How can you tell? Screwdriver's brand new, Patsy. And there are flakes of metal on the end of it that match the metal of the door lock. But, oh. See the fresh scratches on the brass? Holy hey. smoke, I didn't... The boy used matches for light. You can tell because there's several burnt paper matches on the floor. Also, the match book, which was probably dropped in the scuffle. Well, that's right. And the janitor interrupted him. There was a fight. And then, murder. Typical case of juvenile delinquency. Nick, we got to get down to your club and pick this kid up right away. Matty, there are more than a hundred kids in that club. It'll take a week to question everyone and a month to check their alibis. We've got to work quicker than that. Well, how can we, Nick? Well, the wool from the sweater is your lead, Patsy. Check the stores that sell sweaters. It may be possible to trace the sale to the boy who's wearing it. Uh-huh. Also, check the club. Someone may be able to identify the sweater there. Right. Now, what are you going to do? This matchbook is my lead, Matty got the address of a candy store on Sherman Avenue on it, near the old Sherman Dance Hall. You know the place. Yeah. Gang may be operating from around there. They are. I'll find them. I don't like cheap tin horn crooks, especially in my club. Close the door, Smokey. Okay, Noonan. Hi, Noonan. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Gene. Fran ain't here, huh? Nope. Hi, Smokey. How'd you make out? Lousy. Are you kidding? I took 33 bucks in cash and some jewelry. You call that lousy? I call murder lousy. Murder? Yeah, it's like I've been telling you, Noonan. It's okay swiping a few bucks, but I don't go for killing. I'm getting out of here right now. Running out to squeal to Papa Nick Carter, huh? Like fun you are. Oh. You need a little slugging around to wise you up, pal. Okay. You're talking up to Noonan, but I can take you any time. Ah, uh, your wind's bad, Noonan. You're weak. Why don't you play a little basketball, hey, huh? Easy, Smokey, easy. You'll knock his head off. Watch out, Smokey. He's reaching for his pistol. Uh, uh. Noonan. Yeah, yeah, I dropped him. He'd have squealed on me sure as anything. Listen, Noonan. Now, look, you guys got to help me get rid of the body. Yeah, get rid of it yourself. I'm getting out of here. Me too, and don't wave that gun at us, Noonan. It only holds one shot. We'll be gone before you can reload it. You're in on this killing, too. Remember that. <laughs> We're in, but we're getting out. Like Smokey said, bucks is one thing, but murder is something else. If you guys start to we talk... We ain't going to squeal, Noonan. Don't worry about us. <laughs> Just start worrying about Smokey. He'll do more talking dead than he'd ever done alive. <laughs> A 
alone in the basement with the body of Smokey Bates, Noonan begins working desperately to find a hiding place for the corpse. We'll see what happens next in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the Luminous Spots. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. An hour after the murder of Smokey Bates, Nick and Matty cautiously descend the steps leading to the basement of the Sherman Dance Hall. This is the place the candy store man told us about, Matty. A gang of kids use it for a club. Yeah, uh, maybe, but it's empty now. Well, there's a smell of fresh cigarette smoke here. Also, hey, wait a minute. Huh? There's water on the floor. It's pitch dark in here. I can't see a thing. Look, Matty, where I'm flashing my light. What? The rest of this place is a shambles. But somebody's been trying to scrub this part of the floor. I wonder why. The uh, spring house cleaning, maybe. I doubt it, but we'll find out. I'm going back to my car to get my portable lab kit. While I'm doing that, you get some policemen. What for? To watch the entrance of this cellar. Tell them to let anyone in, but not to let anyone out. When I come back, I may have something interesting to show you. All right, ready, Matty? Yeah, sure. Hey, what's that thing you got there? A spray gun. Filled with a derivative of tolic acid. A what? Um, come again? Put out your flashlight and I'll show you something. Okay. Boy, it's black as pitch in here now. Watch. While I spray this acid on the wet spots where the floors have been scrubbed. Yeah? Hey, Nick. There's blue spots appearing on the floor. Glow like phosphorus, don't they? Yeah. They burn just like a blue flame. What I expected would happen. Look, Nick. There are more spots up ahead there. Yes, come on. We'll follow and see where they lead to. Right. See? I just keep spraying, and the spots keep on appearing. Yeah, sure. But what the dickens is the stuff that's burning? Blood, Matty. Yep. Did you say blood? That's what I said. Tolic acid is a recent discovery. Makes the hemin and the blood glow in the dark. Even if it's been cleaned up? Yes. Enough always remains to react like this. Hey, Nick, look. The blood spots lead directly to that old ash pile. Yes. Maybe there's a body buried under the ashes. What? There's your shovel, Matty. Take a look. Yeah, sure, as fast as I can. I'll hold the flash for you. Okay. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on, Matty. Hurry, hurry. I am, I am. Wait a minute. Yep. What's that? Good grief, Nick. It's a body. Yes. Let me uncover his face. Do it. Oh, good heavens. Nick, you know who he is? It's Smokey Bates, one of the kids in my downtown boys' club. Oh, that's too bad. Poor kid shot through the heart. Probably by the same murderer that killed Welland. Nick! He's wearing the sweater that matches the piece of yarn found in Wellen's hand. Yeah. Hey, fellas, what are you doing back there? Hey, Nick, it's a girl. Yeah, I'll douse the light so she can't see us. Yeah, sure, but uh, when she comes close, I'll flash the light in her face. Okay. Dolly's doing back in the ash bin. Hello? <gasps> oh, oh, you're blinding me. Looking for someone? Who wants to know? This is Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad. I'm Nick Carter. What's your name? Fran, Francis Hollis. Looking for someone in particular, Miss Hollis? Oh, no, no. Oh, well, that is a friend of mine who wanted me to meet her here, and, and I... Her? You usually refer to your girlfriends as fellows? Oh, oh, sure. It's kind of a gag. What's the name of the friend you were supposed to meet here? Sally Brown. Uh, usually meet her here? No, I've never been here before, Mr. Carter. And you know nothing about a gang of boys that hang out here? What's the gang? Oh, no, no, Mr. Carter. How old are you, Miss Hollis? Oh, almost 17. It's 2 o'clock. Why aren't you in school? Well, I had a study period, and I... Kind of slipped out. <laughs> I guess Sally must have been playing a trick on me. Yeah, uh, look, you better go back to school, Miss Hollis. You might get into trouble. Yeah, sure. I'd hate to get caught playing hooky. Matty. Yeah? Have one of your men follow that girl. Okay, Nick. And tell him to let her see she's being followed. Also, tell him to make sure she goes to school. Then yeah. he's to wait and follow her home after school. Right. In the meantime, I'll do a little checking on her and then rush down to the club. 
If Smokey Bates was mixed up with this gang, there's a chance some of my other boys may be, too. Okay. Between Francis Hollis and the downtown boys' club, we ought to be able to pick up the killer. <laughs> Everybody here in the gym now, Patsy? Yes, I've rounded up every last boy. Good. Let me have your attention a minute, fellas. A few hours ago, Smokey Bates was murdered in the basement of the Sherman Dance Hall. He was shot down like a dog, dragged to an ash heap and buried in dirt and rubbish. He was murdered by a killer without decency, honor, or shame. Now, it may be that some of you here have been mixed up with this killer. And if you have, I can understand why. If you saw a chance for some easy money, for excitement and adventure, you figured the law wasn't your friend. It was just another rival to compete with. You thought crime was a bigger, more thrilling game. That's what Smokey thought. And I've told you what happened to him. But crime isn't fun. It's dirty, mean, dangerous. If I were you, whoever you are, I'd be ashamed and scared. Now, whoever it is who's mixed up in this has a choice to make. He can come down to my office and let me help him out of this jam. And believe me, on my word of honor, I'll do everything I can. Or he can try to bluff his way out of it. But if he does, heaven help him. Mr. Carter. Oh, hello, Jerry. Come on in. Come in, Jean. We're the guys. Yeah. Well, fellows, I'm glad you came to me. You're in a bad mess. This is the only way to work it out. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I I guess it's like you said, Mr. Carter. We just started off doing it for fun. But when he killed Smokey... Who killed Smokey, Jean? I can't tell you, Mr. Carter. Oh, look, Mr. Carter, we'll tell you everything we did. We'll pay back every nickel we swiped. We'll do anything you say. But we can't squeal on this guy. We gave him our word we wouldn't. Okay, Jerry. If that's the way you feel, I'm not going to insist. I'll get him, without your help. But there's one thing I do insist on, fellas. And it's not going to be easy for you. You're going to the police. You're going to confess everything you've done. You're going to take what's coming to you. Understand? Yes, Mr. Corey. Sure, Mr. Corey. Good boys. And if it'll give you any satisfaction, Miss Bone and I are driving to Fran Hollis's home right now. And inside of an hour, the killer of Smokey Bates is going to get what's coming to him. Nick, how come you know where Fran Hollis lives? Did a little checking before I went back to the club, Patsy. Ah. Oh. Mattis should be here to meet me by now. This is it. The White Clabbert House. How much does Fran know about the murders, Nick? I don't think she knows anything. You don't? She wouldn't have come barging into the basement if she did. But she is mixed up with the gang. Hmm. Maybe we can locate the killer through her. Nick! Oh. Hey, Nick! Oh, there's Maddie standing in the doorway. And is he mad? I'm all in the house here, and for the love of Pete, hurry it up. All right, all right. Take it easy, Maddie. That bonehead cop let the Hollis girl get away. Oh, no. What? Well, let's have it, Matty. What happened? He tailed her back to school, then he tailed her home. Then? Then about five minutes ago, a whole flock of girls trooped in here to see her. A couple of minutes later, they all marched out and she went with them. And my man didn't spot her. Well, at least you've got to hand it to her. She's a smart kid. Okay, okay. So what? What do we do now? I'll show you. I'll show you. Come on over here to the telephone. Hey, wait a minute. How come you know where the phone is? I was here a little while ago as an inspector for the phone company. Oh, what? so that's the checking up you were doing. Yes. See, I figured Fran was smart enough to spot the cop you put on her tail. 
Why, she came straight home from school. Then she let you in the house? She did. Oh, Oh. my man must have missed you, too. Looks that way, doesn't it? But look, how come she didn't spot your voice as belonging to the guy she talked to in the basement of the Sherman dance hall? Because I used a different voice. (laughs) Oh, 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 Nick. (laughs) Why are you moving the Davenport? Just so I can pick this up. Hey, what's that thing? Looks like a small radio. Better than that. And I said I was sure Fran would head for home, and she did. She wanted to do some phoning in a hurry. Only I got here before she had a chance to. Yeah, and then what? I set this small wire recorder down here on the floor next to the telephone box. So that's what that is, a wire recorder. Now, look, Nick, wiretapping is out. It won't stand up in court anymore. This isn't wiretaping, Reddy. It ain't? No, no. Don't have to attach it to the phone. Said you just lay this wire near the telephone wire. And it Mm. picks up what's said over the telephone? That's right, Betsy. Well, I'll be darned. What will they think up next? I don't know yet, Manny. You know. But didn't she see you leave the recorder? I asked her to get me a drink of water, Patsy. And while she was out of the room, I fixed it. And I'm sure she made a phone call the minute after I left the house. Oh. Now, let's see. Hello, Noonan? Yeah, that's you, Fran. Noonan, what's happened? There were cops down in your club room snooping around, and there's been a cop following me all afternoon. Are they wise to the racket? Cops down in the basement, huh? Uh-huh. Hey, that ain't so good. Well, tell me what's up. Okay, Franny, listen. I'm over at the Sherman filling station. Yeah. I just acquired a car. Beat it over here and I'll tell you what's doing. But the cops are watching my house. Look, baby, use your brains. You can figure a way to get out. Just hurry up over here. So long. Yeah, that's all there is. It's enough. Matter, you stay here and cover the house. Patsy, come with me. There's not a minute to lose. <laughs> Nick and Patsy dash out of Fran Hollis's house, hoping to meet her and Smokey Bates' killer. In just a minute, we'll see whether they left in time. And now for the conclusion of the case of the Luminous Spots, brought to you by Old Dutch Glenter. At the curb in front of the Sherman filling station, Joe Noonan sits impatiently in a new sedan. As he sees Francis Hollis approaching, he calls out softly. Fran, over here. In the car. Get away, Nuna. Nobody followed me. What kept you so long? I'm in a hurry. I told you on the phone I've been followed all afternoon. And I had to get rid of some kids, and I had to duck in and out of alleys to make sure nobody followed me here. Okay, okay. How do you like the car, baby? Oh, it's a beauty, Nuna, but... Now, listen, kid. The car's taking you and me right out of town for good. Sure, Nuna, but... i got to work fast, baby, so the explanations will have to keep. Now, this is what you're going to do. Hurry, Nuna. You talk talk so fast, I can't... We barge into the filling station, see? And as soon as we get inside, you pull a faint. Yeah. Just drop right onto the floor, out cold. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Just do it, kid. That's all. Just do it. Uh Now, come on. Hey, you want something, bud? Yeah, I got to have a set of new gas. Joe, I... I I feel kind of funny. Hey, Fran, what's the matter? Oh. Fran. Hey, bud, she's fainted. Give me a hand. Get her off the floor, huh? Okay, mister. If you want to help, you can reach. Why, you? Get over against the wall. Wait. Get the rod he keeps in the register, Fran. But no, then. It'll shoot a lot better than this dinky 22 I got. Grab the dough out of the register, too. Hey, look, kid. Do like I told you, Fran. We need that dough, and we ain't got all day. All right. Don't think this character's going to spill anything to anybody. No, yeah, you don't mean you're going to kill him. Why not? No, then I won't get mixed up in a killing. You're mixed up already, baby. I knocked off Smokey Bates. You killed Smokey? Why do you think the cops were on your tail? But, Noonan, I don't want to Make up your mind. Are you with me, or do you want to get over there against the wall with him? Oh, Noonan, please, let me out of here, please. Okay, baby, get over there. No. I'll knock the bolt of you off at the... All right, all right, take it easy, friend. Nobody's hurt. I just shot the gun off your boyfriend's hand, that's all. Sorry I couldn't get here any sooner. It was soon enough to end the criminal career of Mr. Noonan. That's about all there is to the case, Patsy. We've got Noonan for two murders, and we've got him cold. Yeah, but how did he kill Smokey and Well and Nick? One of the reasons he held up the gas station was to get a revolver. He had a small single-shot pistol that fired a twenty-two caliber shell. Would have preferred something better, no doubt, but that was deadly enough at close range. Oh. Well, if the case is finished, Nick, where are we driving to this morning? Oh, the case isn't finished, Patsy. As far as I'm concerned, it's just started. What do you mean? We're getting out here. Come on. Oh, but this is the courthouse. We're headed for court. Uh-huh. I don't get it. Patsy, you and I are going into that court and put up the fight of our lives for Jerry, Jean, and Fran Hollis. Oh, but Nick, what can you do? Get them suspended sentences, I hope. And then we're really going to work on them at the Downtown Boys Club. You mean Fran, a girl at the Downtown Boys Club? 
Oh, I forgot to tell you, Patsy. The Boys Club is opening a girl's auxiliary. And you're running it. I'm running it? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. now see here, Nick Carter. Now, listen, Patsy. If I do any arguing this morning, I'm going to do it in court. Those kids aren't hardened criminals. And I'm not counting this case a success unless I save them. Well, Nick, can you tell us something about the adventure Old Dutch Cleanser is going to bring us next week? Next week, we're going to meet a young war veteran who decided to turn me into a detective college. Only he unfortunately turned himself into a number one murder suspect. Nick got him out of it by making him wear gloves. Gloves in detective colleges. Sounds fascinating. Uh, what do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Missing Thumb. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. <music> Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by George Wright. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.